In this video, we will look at 8 Python programming tips and tricks you might not have known about. Learning about these features will help you write more Pythonic code and become a better Python programmer. So let's get started. The number one trick is unpacking. Unpacking is an operation that can be used to assign the values of an iterable to a number of variables with a single assignment statement. Let me show you what I mean. I'll go to my code editor and I'll say a comma b comma c equals 1 comma 2 comma 3. Now let me print a, print b and print c and when I press run then you can see that 1 was assigned to a, 2 was assigned to b and 3 was assigned to c. Python assignment statements are evaluated from right to left. So we can even use unpacking to swap the values of two variables in a single line. And I'll remove this old code and define two variables as x equals 66 and y equals 44. I'll swap the values of variables x and y. For that, I can write something like x comma y equals y comma x. And now print x equals and x similarly print y equals and y and when I press run you can see that x's value is now 44 and y's value is now 66 where the variables have been swapped. The second tip is negative indexing. Python programming supports negative index values for iterables like lists, strings and tuples. Using a negative index gives us items from the last so minus 1 gives us the last item, minus 2 gives us the second last item and so on. I'll go back to my code editor, remove this old code and I'll create a variable called numbers equals, it'll be a list of the multiples of 5, so 5, 10, 15, 20 and 25. Now let me print something like print numbers minus 1. When I run this program, then you should be able to get the last element. Similarly, I can do print numbers minus 3 and when I press run, then you can see that I get the third element from the last. By the way, if you are finding this video useful, a sub to the channel would be much appreciated. The third trick I want to talk about today is slicing. Python supports the slice notation for sequential data types like lists, strings and tuples. Slicing allows us to create a new sequence from an existing sequence. Let me give you an example. I'll go to my code editor and suppose I, we have a list like this. So let me remove or let me remove this code. Now let me create a new list containing the first three items of this list. So for that I can say new numbers equals numbers colon zero comma 3. Here 0 is the start index and 3 is the end index of the slice I want of this list. Now when I run this code, oh I haven't printed it so I'll say print new underscore numbers and when I run this code then you can see that I got the first three elements of the list. The thing you need to remember about slicing is that the first index is inclusive and the last index is exclusive. That is why I got the indexes from 0, 1 and 2 which were the element 1, 2 and 3 respectively but the element at index 3 was skipped. Also we can skip the start and end index as well. If we skip the start index then slicing starts from the 0 index, the first element and if we skip the last index, the slicing ends at the last element. In our code, I can remove this 0. And because anyways I wanted to start from the first index when I press run, I get the same output as before. The complete slicing notation syntax looks like this. It has the start index, the end index and step. Step determines the interval in which we want to get a new list. If we skip it, we get a list at an interval of 1 like in our previous examples. Let me now show you an example using a different value of step. I'll remove this old code from my editor and I'll say numbers equals let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Now I'll say print numbers 1 
colon 6 colon 2. Here this code means creating a list starting from the second item or the item with index 1 up to the sixth item with a step size of 2. Let me run this code. As expected this code prints a list with second, fourth and the sixth item. Now let me show you a neat hack to reverse a list in Python. Here I will say print numbers and colon colon minus 1. When I run this code you get this list reversed. The fourth trick I want to talk about today is list, set and dictionary comprehension. Comprehensions allow us to create lists, sets and dictionaries in a more elegant and Pythonic way using a single line expression. Suppose we have to create a list of the first 5 powers of 2. For this, we would normally use a for loop and append every item to the list. Let me run the code I have on the screen and you can see that we get the expected result. Now wouldn't it be neat if we could do this same task in a single line? List comprehension allows us to do exactly that. Let me show you how. I will define the numbers list directly with the expression which is 2 to the power i in this case. So here I will say numbers equals 2 to the power i. Now I will add a for loop in the same line. So I will say for i in range of 1 to 6. And let me close the bracket. Now let me print numbers and when I press run I get the same output. This code is much more simpler and elegant than before and it almost feels like you are reading English. Let me read this code out and you can decide for yourself why it works. Create a numbers list with elements in the form 2 to the power i where i takes values from 1 up to 6 that means 1 to 5. This results in the list of first 5 powers of 2. The next trick I want to talk about is star args and star star kw args. Star args is used to accept a variable number of arguments. It can be used in a function to take any arbitrary amount of arguments. Let me show you what I mean. I will create a function called add and for the arguments I will say star args. So let me remove this old code and I will say def add and instead of just a regular argument I will say star args. Let me define total as 0 and then in a loop I will say total plus equals n and outside the loop I will say return total. Now let me call this I will say print add first let me try with nothing let me try one more so I will say print add 1 comma 2 and let me try one more with three variables so I will say add or maybe 5, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. The name args is arbitrary but is used as the standard convention. When I press run, you can see that this function worked no matter how many arguments I gave it. Now let's talk about star star kw args. Similar to star args, star star kw args is used to accept an arbitrary number of key value pairs. It can be used in a function when we do not know how many keyword arguments are being passed. Let me show you what I mean. So I will remove this old code. Let me create another function. I will say def printer and the keyword args. Now inside this I can say for x comma y in keyword args dot items. I have used the unpacking I have talked about before and here I can say print f I just want to print the key and the value like this. Now let me put this to the test so I will say printer language equals python with just one key value pair and the next one I can try with two so I can say printer let us say name equals bill gates and company equals Microsoft and when I press run no matter how many keyword arguments I give the printer function is able to seamlessly handle them. Before moving to the next section of the video the programming team has created an app that allows you to learn Python from your phone. 
The app contains bit size lessons that are easier to understand, a built in interpreter so that you can run Python on your phone, quizzes, and many more. The app is available on both iOS and Android. The links are in the video description below. The next trick I want to talk about is sets and set operations. Sets in Python are like sets in mathematics. A set cannot contain duplicate items and these items are not in any particular order. In Python, we can perform different mathematical set operations intuitively using various Python operators. Let me show you what I mean. So I'll remove this old code and create two sets. So I can say A equals, for instance, 10, 20, 20, 30, and 40. And then let me create another set. So 30, 30, 40, let's say 50, 60, and 70. Now, if I want to find the difference between these two sets, I can simply use the minus operator. I can just say print A minus B, and when I press run, I get the difference of those two sets. And if I want to find the union of these two sets, I can simply use the OR operator. So here, let me try print A pipe B pipe here is the OR operator. And when I press run, then I get the union of these two sets. Similarly, if I wanted the intersection, I can say print A and B. The AND is the intersection operator. And when I press run, then I get the intersection of these two sets. The seventh tip that I want to share with you is the chaining of comparison operators. Suppose we have to check if the age of a person is greater than 18 but less than 60. For this, we would normally check each condition and use the logical operator AND. Let me show you what I mean. So I'll remove this old code and I'll say age equals, let me convert to integer and say enter age. Now I'll say if age greater than 18 and age less than 60, I want to accept the person. Else, let me say print rejected. I save the file. Now, when I run this code and enter age as 30, then I get accepted. Let me make this accepted. I'll run this again. I'll say 30 and I get accepted as expected. However, in Python, there's a better way of writing this condition using the operator chaining. Let me show you what I mean and I'll change this to say age, sorry, 18 less than age less than 60. Now, when I run this code again, it says enter age and I can say something like 30 and I get the same output as before. But this code is much more readable than before. The last tip I want to talk about is the ternary operator. Ternary operators allow us to make our code more concise by allowing us to write if conditionals in a single line expression. Let me show you what I mean. Suppose we have to create a program that checks if a number is odd or even. For this, we would normally say we'll accept a number. So let me remove this and say number equals to enter a number. Now, obviously, I'll need an if statement. So I'll say if number modulus 2 equals equals 0, print even and else, oops, I should have used modulus, else, I'll say print odd. Let me run this code and I'll enter an odd number like 31 and you can see that it prints odd. Using a ternary operator, we can shorten this program even more. Here, I'll say result equals even if number modulus 2 equals equals 0, else odd. Now, I'll print the result. I'll say print parity is result. Now, when I run this program, it asks me to enter a number. Let me enter 31 again. And this time I get parity is odd. 
and you can see that this program also works like before but is much more concise. That's it for this video. If you want to revise these concepts, you can find all these programs in our GitHub repository. I'll also put this link in the video description and if you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Happy programming!